Hey guys, so earlier today I went and saw the new Johnny Knoxville comedy, Action Point. Um, I'm kind of recovering still from, uh, I've been sick the last couple of days. And I was originally going to go see this movie on Friday. I went and saw this on Saturday and I was originally going to go see it on Friday. But like I said, I've been sick as a dog and I'm uh, finally recovering. And I got three movies, new movies I wanted to fucking go see uh, this week. And I'm like, ah. I said, that's kind of delaying uh, me seeing, like, at least one of them. Um, but uh, it was kind of funny with this movie. Like, it's kind of been a movie that's been kind of under the radar, uh, particularly from critics, because... Like, up until Friday afternoon, there was, like, no reviews for a fucking thing at all. I was like, what the hell? I didn't expect that. Um, hell, even for that movie Adrift, like, we didn't get reviews for that until, like, Thursday. Um, like, it didn't stop, start popping up for that movie, like, until Thursday. Um, but I was kind of surprised by that. Uh, with Action Point. I mean, it didn't look bad, and, like, as soon as the reviews started popping up, the... The more I realized, that, like, that there's a reason why this isn't getting uh, pre-screened by critics, because this is getting horrible reviews, and I was like, really? I said, that didn't look that terrible. I mean, it didn't look like anything special, but it didn't look like it was going to be, like, anything that would be, like, warranting, like, a 17% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know. I was like, wow, that's kind of interesting. Um, so I usually like Johnny Knoxville. Uh, you know, and it looks like it's kind of in the spirit of, like, his stuff he used to do in Jackass, but it has a, it, but it's an actual movie, like, kind of like, uh, Bad Grandpa was, but more, looked like it was more focused on the movie element of it, the story element, than just, uh, Jackass stunts, like, Bad Grandpa, because, but, pretty much Bad Grandpa, even though it had a story to it somewhat, it was pre pretty much just a spinoff of the TV show. It was a TV show, a version of the TV show that just had a story kind of wrapped around, wrapping the movie up and, you know, like, you know, in bits and parts. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I was like, it's, 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 I was like, maybe I'm kind of glad I'm getting sick and not seeing this shit right off the bat because uh, apparently it's not very good. And, uh, yeah, it's not very good at all. Um, this was pretty shitty. Uh, I was not a fan of this movie whatsoever. And I'm like, I'm a fan of Johnny Knoxville. I think he's actually a talented guy. Uh, you know, take uh, like not just as a the most. I, not just because he's the most famous jackass guy. I think as a comedian, he's pretty good. And uh, when given a chance, when he ventures off and does something other than the jackass stuff. Um, but this is just... This movie sucked. <laughs> it's not funny. Uh, and a comedy that is not funny is just fucking... I mean, I can't think of anything worse than that. Uh, I guess, like, a horror movie that's not scary. Um, man, this movie is just... It wasn't very fucking good. I'll say this. I had... If there was any positives I could give of this movie, I did get a couple chuckles. A couple. I counted them. Two. Actually, two chuckles in this movie. Two whole chuckles. One was the part at the beginning of the movie where he's explaining that he lives on a lake. And, uh... Is, it lives in, on a house in, on on this lake where he says his next door neighbor is an alcoholic bear and it proceeds to show Johnny Knoxville up in a tree hiding from this bear who wants his beer uh, and he drops his beer and the bear starts chugging the beer I kind of fucking chuckled at that as like, and it becomes a running gag about this bear they pretty much keep tricking this bear into drinking. It kind of gets old after a while. Like, a lot of fucking jokes. I also fucking loved the... Uh, the only other part I did laugh was, like, uh, when they're trying... They find out, like, um, when they start... Uh, this, this park of theirs starts getting popular. Uh, a lot of the people are just dropping off their kids and lost and found. And... It, 
like they're just causing all kinds of havoc in the lost and found area and so they decided to make it like a kitty park a version of their own kitty park and it's like they decided to have a petting zoo which is like has like a fucking porcupine and alligator uh they eventually get the bear in there uh like the worst animals you could put in a fucking petting zoo that was kind of funny uh, and then, like, the version of the kitty park was kind of just, like, the most horrid thing I've ever seen. I mean, it fit with the rest of the park, but, you know, it, it was, I, I did kind of laugh at that. Uh, that was the only, like I said, that was the only two laughs I had in this fucking movie, man. It was, the problem with this movie is, it doesn't know what the hell it wants to be. That's one of the problems also with this movie, it, in that, this movie comes off like it wants to be like your stereotypical summer vacation like the giant Knoxville's daughter is he has an estranged daughter that comes to visit him uh, while he's running this park during the summer and it becomes like one of those movies where it's kind of like yeah you know, it's a movie about him and him trying to establish a relationship with his daughter while He's running this really rough shot, fucking insane uh, amusement park that just, uh, you know, has no rules and regulations whatsoever. And it's like, all right, I can get behind it. I mean, that's decent acting by him and uh, Giant Oxbow and this daughter, but they don't really have much fucking time together to even to develop a, like, a chemistry together because... This movie can't help but fucking just randomly, this movie would just decide, it couldn't decide whether it wanted to be that kind of movie about, like, you know, a summer vacation, like, growing up kind of movie that you see in, like, the 80s, about, um, or if it wanted to be a, just a plain old jackass spinoff, because it would just randomly cut at points in this movie for no fucking reason like to just stupid stunts that giant Knoxville would do there are points in this movie just random shit would just happen to giant Knoxville for no fucking reason and it had no context nothing i mean it works in jackass yeah it works in jackass and bad grandpa um because you know it's Jackass, like you know, there's really not much context. Bad Grandpa had more setup to, or more context to the stunts that they were doing, um, and did better than this, than this fucking movie. It's just like a lot of random shit would. They would just cut the random shit of Giant Nashville just doing all these stunts, and it's just like. Okay, do you want to be a jackass movie or do you want to be something else? Well, pick, pick what the fuck you want to be, movie. Um, and I don't know if I'm just getting old or I don't know, but yeah, I was a fan of the original Jackass and everything else, but this the whole thing of like them doing their stupid stunts. Is kind of getting old. Um, it is. I feel like it is. Maybe it didn't help really with this movie that really the stunts in this movie weren't really memorable. They're just there and not, you know, really that funny at all. I mean, you know, fucking the original Jackass movie had. I mean, I remember. I would say probably the first Jackass movie is probably my favorite. The one I remember because it. it they had the stunt where they put a toy car up that guy's ass, and it's still the funny one of the funniest things they've ever done. Um, I remember the second one had them jerking off a horse. Why is that the thing I fucking remember? I don't know why, but yeah, I remember that. Uh, you know, in this one, it's just them do random shit. Like I said, it just randomly cut. Like, fine, if you want to make a jackass movie, then just make a fucking jackass movie. This, that's what they should have just done. Um, it was, like, really unnecessary. And, like, Johnny Knoxville, dude, man, I, I figured, like, when Jackass first premiered, he was probably my age, what I am now, which is, like, 29 going on 30. And 
he was about that same age, I think, when Jackass first started. He's 47 now, dude. Like, you gotta hang this shit up eventually, man. It's like, I cannot imagine his fucking, what his body is fucking feeling like. He's, like I said, he's talented. He doesn't need to do the Jackass stuff all the time to prove he's talented. He's actually more than that. I, like I said, he's always going to be kind of, you know, tied down with the, you know, that he was, his most famous stuff that he ever did was, he was the, the leader of the Jackass crew. He's the most famous out of anybody in, on that show. I mean, he was the only one who really had any fucking talents. I mean, the other guys were just, you know, guys that were good at causing bodily harm to themselves, and that's about fucking it. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Um, um, I mean, we're, I, I never expected Steve-O to be a, have a fucking career, movie career after that. And he didn't. Or Wee Man, or, like... And they also, like, bring Chris Pontius in this. And he was honestly the worst part of this fucking movie. It was just randomly cut to him talking about... Or, he, like, he would just have scenes where he would just start talking randomly talking about stupid shit had nothing to do with the plot uh or just random stories and it would be like him trying to ad lib and it'd be really fucking bad and it wouldn't be funny at all i wasn't the only one who wasn't laughing i, I think there was like two people in the theater with me and they weren't laughing at all i didn't hear them fucking laugh one bit so i mean couldn't have been that fucking good. I mean, I don't know if I would, if I would have been in a crowded theater if this movie would have got over more than it did. But this movie, god damn, this movie sucked. This movie was not very good. Um, I mean, I didn't have high expectations going into it, but it's it could have been a lot. Here's the fucking funny part about this movie. I didn't know about this until probably right before I saw this movie that this movie's actually based off a real amusement park, like, back in the day, like, in the 70s, and they took that basis, and, like, you read the story, and it wasn't too far-fetched from what this movie, like, represents the amusement park. They had to change the name for the movie's sake, but I forget what it was originally called. But I was like, why didn't they just, you know, I was thinking, like, while I was watching this movie, he's like, you know what would have been better is if they would have just, Johnny Knoxville would have just made a documentary about this amusement park. It probably would have been a hell of a lot better. I said, I guarantee you that story would probably have been more interesting and more funny than what we actually got. Uh, because, like, Johnny Knoxville, I said, I don't, I know a lot of people probably never even heard of this movie. He was responsible for making one of my favorite what the fuck documentaries I've ever seen in my entire life. There's this great documentary. I know a lot of people probably don't know of this, but fucking go check it out. You promise me, promise, I promise, it. you will not fucking regret checking this out. It's called The Wild and Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. It's a movie about the trashiest fucking white trash family you'd ever seen in your entire life and it's all the stereotypes of people that live in west virginia balled up into one giant trashy family that lives in west virginia it's amazing it's unbelievable you have to fucking check it out in the boy it's one of those movies i recommend anybody check out he was response i don't know if he i don't think he directed it but he produced it he like there was a documentary years ago about one of the members of the family and he was so interested in like following up on this family and like it is fucking amazing. Um, I, go fucking check that out. See that before. Go check that out. I don't know how you. I don't know if it's on YouTube or it's. I, I forget how to fucking access. Find. I'm sure it's somewhere online. It's amazing. Um, watch that instead of this shit. Um, yeah, I, I don't recommend this one bit. Um, as far as trailers go. I did get a lot of new. I did get a lot of new trailers in front of this, uh, surprisingly. Uh, Crazy Rich, what the hell? Crazy Rich Asians. Okay, that is one of the weirdest titles in fucking film history. 
Um, I don't know what her to call racist or what the hell. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's about the most nailed or spot on fucking titles I've ever heard of in my entire life. It's about crazy rich Asians. That's pretty much it. <laughs> it's about a guy who is in a relationship with this girl. It's an all Asian cast. Um, and she doesn't know he's like, his family's like the richest family in like China or something like that. It's like, wow. Um, and it's like, you know, she goes to visit him and she finds out like he's like pretty much like almost royalty over there and his whole family is. And, you know, of course, the mom's a snooty, stuck up, and doesn't think that she's good enough for her son, yada, yada, yada. You've seen this a million times before, but now it has an Asian cast, all Asian cast, and has the sassy friend. It isn't a black friend, it's just an Asian friend. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's like, it looks so... I've seen this a million times before kind of movie, but like like I said, with a much diverse cast than I've ever seen with these kinds of movies, that's the only difference. Uh, the Darkest Minds. Like, what the hell was this? Uh, is this an X-Men ripoff? Or is this like a young adult, adult novel of something like they're trying to make a big thing now? I don't know what... The, this looked like just a giant X-Men ripoff. It's about um, a bunch of kids that have superpowers. That's all I fucking like, got out of that. And they're living in a world where kids are being put in tournament camps. I think that her fucking have superpowers. Something weird like that. And it's like, okay. So it's X-Men. Like, I'd rather watch fucking X-Men than this shit. Like, whatever. Um, Darkest Minds is what I call Skyscraper. Got a new trailer for that. That's the, the first time I got a new trailer for this one. Uh, like I said, it's Die Hard meets the fucking Towering Inferno. But it has The Rock in it. Which is, and he plays a Marine, I think a former Marine who's an amputee. I don't know why they needed to put him as an amputee, but fuck it, why not? Uh, like, I guess it's John McClane, but if he was played by The Rock. Um, it, it's basically what this movie looks exactly like. Uh, it's like the comparisons to Die Hard are endless. Like, you know, they have some weird, mysterious group. Uh, take over this tower and his family's uh, trapped in this building and he has to try to get him out and, yeah, yeah, and has to take down this group of uh, men that are taking over this building. It's Die Hard! Like I said, it's fucking Die Hard! Like I said, it's Towering Inferno because there's a big giant fire being uh, spread throughout this building or something like that. I'm like, okay. Um... I'm gonna go see it just because it's fucking the rock and like I said, it might be it might suck. It might actually be decent. But it if it even if it sucks, I guarantee you the rock's gonna be awesome in it. And like I said, it's got Nev it also got Nev Campbell in it. That's fucking awesome. I haven't seen her in anything in a while. Uh Uncle Drew, a new trailer for that one. Um Man the Morrissey of this shit, it's like this looks pretty fucking bad. This does look really bad. Like, I love basketball. I'm a big NBA fan and a basketball fan. And hell, Kyrie Irving used to play for my favorite team, the Cavs. Um, but, yeah, this doesn't look like it's going to be promising. I'm still going to probably see this shit just because, like, I'm kind of curious I mean, it's got all these NBA legends like Shaq, Reggie Miller, and Chris Webber, all that shit like that in this film. I mean, it's, it doesn't look that good. It doesn't at all. Yeah. But at least I'll still probably have a review of it when it comes out. I think what, at the end of the month it comes out. And then I finally, and I got a new, tra I got a trailer for a remake of Superfly. 
okay, that's a random movie to be remaking nowadays. Um, I've never seen the original Superfly. I'll confess that right now. Um, it looks like your kind of stereotypical uh, gangster movie. Honestly, this really does. But it's like a remake of a 70s film, uh, but done in the modern day, so I don't know. Um, that's as far as trailers go. I'll be back. I still got to go see Upgrade. I'm going to try to go see that tomorrow and sometime later this week, Adrift. And until then, I'll talk to you guys later.